Hallelujah. We hear that too. Welcome, welcome everyone to our Wednesday midweek service. Hallelujah. And um, regardless of what kind of week you're having this week, whether it started out good and it's still going great, or maybe it started out good and kind of dwindled, today we're here to sing Hallelujah anyhow, right? <laughs> A verse that encourages in our worship from Isaiah 25 says, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things. Things planned long ago. So sing along with us. Sing like hallelujah. And worship along with us.
love the Lord, say amen. amen. If you love the Lord, say hallelujah. hallelujah. I hear you out there. Greetings in the name of Jesus to our church family, those that are here this evening, as well as our uh, church family that are watching on the internet. Praise God for the internet. Amen. Amen. We have, uh, you're able to watch our prayer meetings, our midweek services, and uh, all those other services that you don't join us here at the church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. And uh, we want to greet you in the name of Jesus tonight. Uh, all of our uh, guys that are here, as well as you that are watching tonight. God bless you. Um, we're going to go to the word of the Lord for us, and after that, we'll have a time of prayer. But as we uh, talk about the word of God, if you have a prayer need, uh, post it or, you know, uh, put it on there. And if it's a personal one, just say, pray for me. We do go back and view our services and, uh, and write down prayer requests for those that do put it on there. So, Facebook, and Amen. But let's pray. Lord, help us as we listen to your word this evening. Pray your Holy Spirit come and open our minds and our hearts to the truth of your word so that we can have strength as we walk with you through this journey that we're on. We thank you for tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah, you're going to have to speak louder because I can't hear it in one ear. Amen. I don't know. Uh, a, a bug went inside my ear. So, <laughs> like last week. So, uh, the bug went in there and I heard it buzzing and then I got a, a those uh, what is it? paper clip, oh. you know, and I dug it in there and then I got half of the bug's body out. So, I think the other half is probably in there uh, speaking to me right now. <laughs> but anyways, uh, I've been having problem with my ear and it always seems like it's plugged up and uh, Lisa's been helping me uh, with pouring peroxide in my ear and it helps, but at the end of the day, it seems like it's, uh, it's still plugged up. So she told me, go see the doctor. I said, okay. I'll make an appointment. Amen? Amen. So pray for my ear. We're going to pray tonight. So, that's the Lord to get rid of that bug that's in there. Amen. So, let's go to the Word of God. You know, we've been here with uh, uh, the Apostle Peter and uh, First uh, Peter, and we're making our way through uh, to, we're going to do the whole two books of Peter. So tonight, we started at 1 Peter chapter 2 last Wednesday, if you were here with us. And so tonight, we're going to uh, read verses 9 to 12. Um, Got to make sure the time is... is that, I can't see that time. But I'm sure Bora let me know when it's time to end. Since she's sitting over there. Usually she should be playing the piano when it's time to <laughs> Thank God Tony's over there too. <laughs> <laughs> well, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so anyway, Peter was saying to us tonight, remember who you are. <laughs> uh, Peter, first Peter chapter two, verses nine to, to twelve. I'm gonna read it in this morning. Amen. So there's a uh, SOV, which is the old translation, and then there's another one, uh, and then this one is a contemporary uh, translation of our Psalm 1 Bible. So you might think, what is he reading? You know, so 
just follow along. My Aoto Olenu will feel the filia. O Tupu most taulana. Olenu Paia. O Tanata lava or their tua. In the Eoto Faalia to Naluena Opo from Gia, Elena Mala Wino to my poor Uli, Ilona Lama Mala Malamba, Opo from Gia. Say Amen. O Oto Oesa Ne Abe Manu Anamua. Awa Abe Ne Manu or their tua. Talea Lofonia, O To and Amoa, Ale Ne Walofonia, Ale Ne Walofonia. That's good news, amen. Amen. Sumatasi Awo Awoi Awoi. That's how that goes. But Awa Yachi Yachoto, but not to Essie. May our Maule Ne Lamalami. No, no, we got to start to move. Somebody say amen. 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 Ileaso e asiasi mai yai. Amen. Mandei fasvai tau da. So I'm going to read it in English. Um, verse 9. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, now you're God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Eleven, dear friends, I warn you as temporary, as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from the worldly desire that wage war against your very soul. Verse 12, be careful to live properly among other living neighbors. Then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. Say amen. amen. So tonight I want to remind you what Peter is telling us tonight. Remember who you are. And one of the reasons that Peter gives us that we need to constantly remind ourselves of who we are is for the sake of the lost. See, as Christians, we must constantly remind ourselves of who we are. First and foremost, we're God's children. Beloved children, we're chosen. We're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's very own possession. We're God's people. We're not of this world. We're just passing through. So quit living like you belong here. Say amen. amen. We don't belong here. We're alien to this world. Amen. But sometimes as Christians, we need to be reminded of exactly who we are. And Peter, but my picture, that's what he's saying here uh, to paraphrase. Amen. Because when you live a beautiful life, what is a beautiful life? You live God's life. A honest and true life. A life of someone that's been born again, cleansed and washed by the blood of Jesus. Because of our faith, in Jesus, God has accepted us as his beloved children. 
Because before he wasn't a beloved child of God. Because of your faith in Jesus. That Jesus said, if you believe in me, you won't perish, but you'll have everlasting life. Not only that, you are given this power to become daughters and sons of God. How are we to live and conduct ourselves in this world as foreigners? Somebody that don't belong here. We don't just mingle in. We don't just do like they say, monkey see, monkey do. No, we live different standard from what the world uh, say, well, that's okay. And even in now, today's society is so hard to live according to what the word of God says, because even in the midst of the Christian church, they're starting to creep in ways of the world. We're starting to say, well, that's okay, that's okay. We're not all perfect. Mercy and grace, mercy and grace. But the truth of the matter is, you better live like a Christian. You better live like you believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. We can't claim to be righteous. We can't claim to be God's children. We can't claim to be the called out ones if we want to live like we're part of this world. We're not. We're just passing through. We're not, we don't belong here. And we're ambassadors of Jesus. We used to have, way back in the day, it wasn't youth ministry, it was a CA. They look at a CA on Friday. Christ's ambassadors. What does that mean? You represent Jesus in this world. You and I are not part of this world, but we're ambassadors of heaven. Peter reminds us, live like you're an ambassador. Don't live in the old way. But live like you don't belong here. He says, I owe you to you to he says, live like you're just passing through. That you're not a permanent residence. Right? So if you travel abroad, you need a passport. And the passport uh, tells you what's your country, right? And if you, especially if we're part of... Uh, you're a citizen of America, you get a passport, that allows you to travel anywhere in this world that's friendly to America. If you want to go to Western South Boy, you gotta have a passport. That allows you to go there. But in going there, it's saying that you're representing America. They used to brief us in the military that when we go to foreign countries, you, you, you have to wear, you can't wear no shirt with bad names on there. You can't uh, act like you don't know any better. You know, that's when we went to Germany, that was part of our briefing. Hey, you're an American citizen, and not only that, you're an American soldier. Act like you know better. Say amen. amen. Sometimes Christians don't act like they know better. They like to act the worst. Can I get a witness? None of y'all here act the worst. You always act like you know better. Love for Jesus should motivate us to live a godly life in a godless world. That should be your motiv motivating factor. Say amen. And if I pay, it's a whole lot of money. I'm building a, me I'm building a toy. I'm not a boy. Jesus said in John fourteen fifteen, if you love me, keep my commandments. 
Mas Jesus, eu não sou ele, Johannes uh, faz o lima, a feito te alofa e a te ao, te ao si e ao tolo a ele. Uau, mas já te olhei, nem vai te ao. O te ao si e a tolo a ele, Jesus. Ah. Tenho fia a te ao si e a le fa, e que eu me não lhe oi. Amém? A fa, e que eu não lhe oi. E a minha filha vai não lhe oi. Maria ia a... Maori faile a driver's license, so Lisa. Na o lei loa lana driver's license. So, let's see what I want. I want... I'll just tell the... Only the illustrated stuff. <laughs> so we went to the DMV over there in San Marcos, right? Uh, and uh, she went... You know, she went and stood in line and I was doing the uh, check-in online. So she, she comes back and uh, before we said, make sure you have your passport and you have your uh, government ID, you know, your military ID, because that's the stuff they're gonna need to make sure that you, you are who you say you are. Say amen. amen. Who you say that you are. Lisa T. Mamea, married to David Mamea, right? <laughs> so she goes in there and they look up, you know, she has a real ID, but they look it up and say, sorry, we don't have no record of you having a real ID. <laughs> and then they changed her name. So Lisa comes storming out, she's mad, but you know, she didn't act like the world. <laughs> Dealing with the world. <laughs> so I was so proud of her yesterday. So she came outside and you know, there was no security following her. She just came outside, they, they, changed, they changed my name. Yeah, well, we're gonna go, you know, get her, uh, get her birth certificate, and get uh, our marriage license and everything. And we had to went back today, and we then they got, you know. But sometimes when we're put in a situation where we know we're right and they are wrong, you got to remember maybe they're not a Christian. Because what would happen if we acted like we weren't a Christian, right? We, we, we treated them like they treated us. So we went back today, and um, she went back in there, and then she came out, she got her new driver's license, and then they sent a new one in the mail, she said, I was praying because it was getting to be my turn, and I was gonna go see the same lady. And I told her before, I hope you see the same lady. <laughs> go in there and give her a piece of your mind. I said, that's not a very good <laughs> That's not a very good deal. You know, so she come back. See, I was praying because it was getting to my number, and I look at the lady, and she was the next. But after she prayed, some other lady, uh, she went to another lady, which helped her and was very helpful and gave her her real ID instead of a fake ID. <laughs> Amen. That's, you as a Christian need to make sure that you're really real. There's a lot of Christians that proclaim to be Christian, but they're, they're not really following what Jesus mandated for them to follow. Amen. We put it away. Me, I say, na na ye le te mi. As ya se le tu a ilavana na a panga le fainata. Pe as ya se tu le tu a a wo uma na ilo a o le kevshan na te le a mi o kevshan. Say amen. We must obey God, not only because it's our duty, but also out of our devotion to Him. See, a lot of times we do things because we feel that that's our duty. Love my neighbor, that's my duty. But love your neighbor because you're devoted to God. Right? You're devoted to God. So I'm going to love my neighbor, forgive my neighbor, and even those that are not of the faith. Doesn't mean that you can treat your people that are not Christian better than people that are, are Christian. 
has got a work to say. Uh, Amen. Amen. I'm not speaking to the guys that are here. <laughs> or you got the internet. But obey God because you're devoted to him. Jesus says again, in verse 23 of the same chapter 14, if a man loves me, he will keep my words. So important to keep the words of Jesus. Say amen. Ole olanga na rekere shamu, olanga mea na fight, olanga day in and day out. He lives to please God. He lives to do what the Word of God says. Not only are we called out ones, not only are we a holy nation, not only are we a holy people, God's people, but we're also soldiers involved in this spiritual battle that we're fighting evil between evil and good. On one side, there's this human nature, there's this physical nature that wars against the spiritual nature, and they're trying to get you to do one thing or the other. Say amen. amen. And Paul says in Galatians chapter five, Verses 16, he starts to say, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. You want to know how to live like a Christian? Invite the Holy Spirit to be your guide. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are opposite of what the sinful nature desires. We battle that day in and day out. The Spirit of God wants you to do one thing and your human nature and the spirit of the devil wants you to do another thing. There's always the battle of good and evil. Who's been winning that battle lately? You and I, we know the question. Because we're soldiers involved in this battle. The spirit wants us to do one thing. The flesh wants us to do one thing. There are two forces which are constantly fighting each other. God us and the devil just constantly going at it. The battle is always up here. You want to react a certain way because a certain person did something to you that you didn't like, but the Spirit says, don't react that way. The Spirit reminds us to do the things the way that Jesus would do it. And here are some of the things that, that uh, are constantly we're battling against. It says when you follow the desire of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasure, adultery, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, Jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. All those sins have something in common. Uh, but listen to what the Spirit wants us to have. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
Paul says, there is no law against these things. Say amen. And you look at them, the opposite of each other. So we're reminded, not only are we to know that we are God's children, we are a holy nation, a royal priesthood, but we're also soldiers that are fighting this battle. The battle is never against flesh and blood, but the battle is against the... Uh, high rulers and spirit in heavenly realms. Constantly putting thoughts in your mind. Constantly putting ideas in your mind. And it gets even harder when there's something wrong with our walk with the Lord. Say amen. amen. And that means usually the flesh would win out. Peter is reminding us to be strong. Know who you are and act like who you are and don't act like somebody from this world. Most of all, the last thing is we are witnesses to the loss that are around us. We are witnesses to the loss that are around us. We don't just witness with our lips. We must back up our talk with our walk. A lot of times we talk a lot, we talk a good game, but we don't walk the straight line. Huh? I want to tell him, I don't talk if you can't walk what you're going to say. Well, sometimes I, I walk straight. Well, this week. Have you been straight since Sunday? Or there was a time when you was like wanted to, just like we said Sunday, just you just wanted to act crazy. We must back up our talk with the way that we walk. If we're going to talk spiritual, walk the fruit of the Spirit. And if you're talking from your flesh and change your tone. There should be nothing in our conduct that will give the unsaved or the world ammo to attack Jesus and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Who provides that? A lot of times we do. Right? But we should not give ammo to Satan so that he can attack Jesus can it attack the gospel, attack our church, attack your, attack your spiritual walk with God? How do we do that? By making sure that we win that battle. That the Spirit wins that battle. Because our good works must be uh, backed up by our good words. Amen. Amen. <laughs> How we act should be a result of how we speak, what we say. Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 16, he says, Let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. He says, you're the light, and you're the salt of this world. He said, let your light shine, let your salt give flavor, so that people all will see. Not just the Christian that goes to church with you that knows that you're a Christian, but all will see, oh yeah, that's a follower of Christ. He's a believer. She's a believer. 
Peter tells us tonight, bear witness to the lost by our words and our deeds. Saying that, the night io to a mio le le iluma onu esi. O le merlea la to te fai upule ana ai ya te to be shai o to te mata mio le ana. I said, in le o te le la ba mio lo la u. Somebody said, uh, preach. Um, sometimes a sermon is not words, but it is your actions. Preach the gospel, and if necessary, use your words. What does that mean? The gospel is the way that I live. I walk the gospel. My action tells me people who I am. Oh, wow, me if I go to try to not say, oh, oil like a shan. Leo Tala, a mulling up a yak salt tala, I will do it to not say, the other thing to not say, I will. Before you say anything, people will know if you're a Christian, and if you're a Christian, you're a true Christian, but what you do. Our words should coincide with our actions. Our action to support our words. Our life should reflect Jesus Christ to the world that is around us that needs Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's so easy to fall off. So easy. We went to eat last night. I'm not going to tell you the restaurant. But there's lobster in it and color. <laughs> so we went there and we sat down, you know, and we sat there and people came and they got served and they went into, and we just kept sitting there. You know, those kind of things make you want to act like you're from this world. <laughs> because you're within the right. Your rights. You were there first, you could be served first. You're a paying customer, right? And that old liar tried to creep up and, and to go give him a piece of your toe. Right? But thank God, Sister Lisa said, let's go somewhere else. I, I don't even like red lobster. I was thinking, you know, my wife enjoys lobster, so I was going to go there. And she said, let's go somewhere else. You know, so we just got up and left. And then as we were leaving, I heard the, the, the lady, the hostess lady, just tell the other two servants, I don't know if Lisa heard, but I heard it. And the other two servants said, oh, they're leaving. And then I heard the hostess say, oh, that's OK. And I felt like turning around and saying, it is not okay. <laughs> I want to speak to your manager right now. But they said, no, that's, I just kept on. And we got aside, and then the folks that were out there, you're done eating already? You know, because there was a waiting line outside. No, nah, I was just in my way. So we went across to the sushi place, and there was nobody there except one other family, and we had the whole place to ourselves, and the food was bad. Amen. You know. You know, sometimes we want to react to how they treat us. This world. This world that we're living in, that's not our home. Sometimes they test you. But you as a, a child of God, as a holy nation, a holy priesthood, that someone that's fighting for good should hold your peace and just go and let God handle it, right? God says, vengeance are mine. I'll take care of that. And it wasn't all that a big deal. Amen. Amen. We didn't like that lobster place anyway. <laughs> At least I didn't. Amen. <laughs> but things that the world throws at you should not dictate how you're going to react. Words that people say to you should not dictate 
what you're going to say. Let's do as Peter says. Let's do another way, another day. So that they will see your good works and then they're going to praise God, like Jesus says. Right? Let them see your good deeds and then your God will be glorified. Say amen. amen. So that's a word for you tonight and for us tonight. And I pray that we realize who we are. You really got to sit down and evaluate how you've been. If that goes with who you are. Because it's not about getting what you want. It's not about getting your point across. It's not about getting even. It's acting like Christ would act in whatever we go through. Amen? So the rest of this week, remember what Peter says. Remember that our conduct should be that of a foreigner just passing through this world, no matter what they throw at you. Right? You know what they do when they don't, when they can't beat you, you know, by, you know, they're going to join you. And if we can't beat those Christians, well, let's become Christians. The only way to win people, to win the world for Christ, is to act like Jesus. Amen? Amen. You love Jesus tonight? Amen. Amen. It's not even 8 o'clock. You should be loving Jesus a whole lot. <laughs> you know, God is good. His word is good. Uh, taking care of you and your family, taking care of us, brought us this far. And some of us, we didn't know if we were going to make it through this pandemic. We were all worried. We lost loved ones through this pandemic. But it's not going to take away from the goodness of God. God still loves us. He still answers prayer. He's still acting on your behalf. And whatever you go through, whatever the world hands you, God has got the strength for you to make it through. So tonight we're going to go into our time of prayer. And if you're watching tonight and you have a need that you've been asking God a long time for this need, don't give up on God. And if you're a believer and a follower of Christ, and maybe you haven't been representing Jesus all that good, it's okay because God still loves you. But if you need to get that right with the Lord, God will help you tonight. So I'm going to pray in a few minutes for you out there, for us that are here, for our church. Sing a song and then we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. If you have a need, just give it to the Lord. He knows, He knows, He sees. Worship team. He is a
Father, we just come to you tonight, Lord. As you see us, those that are here and those that are watching, our entire church of friends and loved ones, you see the needs that we have, Lord. Needs that we release to you tonight. That we give to you, Father. Doesn't matter how long we've been asking, but Lord, we, we leave it at your feet. We ask, Lord, tonight that you would come and pour out your healing for those that need a physical healing tonight. For our friends and family that are doing dialysis tonight, you know who they are. Father, we pray your strength upon them, your healing upon their bodies. Lord, we lift up our senior citizens, our Tinamatsu and Tamamatsu. Lord, we ask that you will renew their strength. Whatever aches and pain or illnesses that they may have, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would reach down and touch their bodies tonight. Touch their minds and their hearts. Thank you, Lord. Pray for all the families in our church and the needs that they have, Lord. Pray that you reach down to whatever it may be, the financial need, for a job, a need for a raise, a better job, a bigger home. Father, we pray that you would just come and meet them, Lord God. Father, we just pray for the young people in our church and the children of our church, that you would bless each and every one of them those that are in high school, middle school, elementary, as well as college. Father, bless them and help them. We lift up our children who are serving in the armed forces of our nation. Children from our church, Lord. Be with them out there where they're at, Lord. Where they're stationed. Hannah, Jamie, Aleppo, Samalia and her husband, the advised children, Lord, that are overseas. And Father, others that we know of, Lord God, even here locally, Camp Pendleton and the military installations near us, Lord. Your blessing upon them and their families. Especially those that might have families that are deployed. Keep them safe wherever they may be tonight. serving in the armed forces. Be with them and their families. Pray for our first responders, our policemen, firemen, doctors, and our nurses, the caregivers. Lord, I pray that you would be with them in their jobs, protect them, watch them. Thank you. 
upon our church, our pastoral staff, our deacons, our lay preachers, those that are in leadership positions. Help them, Lord God. Help them, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless our worship team that is here with us tonight. Help our worship team, Lord God, continue, Lord, to seek you, your anointing upon them. Father, we pray for our district council in June. Let everything be done for your glory. Be with us in all of that. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, as always, we ask your forgiveness upon us for all our sins and our shortcomings, our doubts and unbelief, and all that we do wrong. We ask in the name of Jesus to let your blood flow and cover us, Lord. Have mercy and grace upon us, upon our children, upon our family. Saturday for a prayer meeting, 7 o'clock.